Good morning. Good morning. Sorry for the delay. Come on in. Technical issues this morning. All right. Come on in. I see you're coming in the room. Pastor Dale Fontenot, New Life Church of God. So grateful that you're tuning in this morning as uh, we're on a backup camera this morning. And so just giving thanks and praise uh, unto the Lord as uh, we'll let the word of God go forth. I uh, see many of you are chiming in, uh, sharing uh, that you are here. Uh, that's encouraging indeed. I'm glad that you're here today and glad that you have tuned in in spite of what's going on. Uh, uh, there's a good news. There's good news that we want to share with you as we join in. Dale Fontenot, New Life Church of God. So grateful that you have tuned in on this morning. Uh, it's a beautiful morning. It's not raining, I guess we should say yet, uh, but we have so much to be grateful to and to the Lord. Uh, we, the proper New Life family, uh, we ready ourselves for the first Sunday of July, July 4th, which will be that Sunday that uh, has been designated that we will go back into a sanctuary and uh, worship the Lord. In the meantime, we're going to make technology work because the Spirit of God works. And so whatever mean, whatever modem in which we can get the word out, we're going to do that. I still believe that you are the very best means to get the word of the Lord out. And so I just pray that you uh, may find yourselves faithful uh, in uh, representing uh, Jesus Christ and all that he stands for and uh, all that uh, he is about. We want to have our morning prayer as we get ready for our message this morning. Our message is entitled Life Priorities and uh, just uh, sharing uh, that word unto us as we are in our house to house modem. Uh, you are in your homes, many of you right now, and uh, I am in my home. And uh, throughout uh, this last year, uh, we have uh, given serious thought and serious teachings of about what takes place in our homes, in our lives, in our day-to-day -day lives, and uh, understanding the importance of gathering inside a church sanctuary. Uh, but these bodies are to be sanctuaries of God each and every day. And so we find that uh, an important priority, an important piece of what we're doing and uh, what we're looking into the Lord about. And so we uh, just always uh, commend that unto you. Well, let's have our opening prayer this morning as we look to the Lord. The needs may be great. The burdens may be heavy. Even as we look at our community, as we look at the world, the hatred, the violence, the senseless living, those who have given up hope. And so therefore, as they give up hope, they live recklessly. You and I live in such a time as this. And so we know that the fervent, effectual prayer of the righteous avails much. And so even as we give ourselves unto the Lord, that we may see his kingdom rise and his glory come, uh, that even as we pray for the communities around us, that we can look to the Lord and just trust him through each season, trust him uh, even now. Uh, those that are dealing with illnesses, those are dealing with uh, heaviness, we uh, give all of that unto the Lord. Will you pray along with me this morning? Let's pray. Father, we give you thanks, Lord God, just for an opportunity to exalt you this morning. You are great. You are mighty. And we lift you up and we exalt you, O Lord. We thank you, Lord God, that um, we have a relationship with you, even as you sent your son, Jesus Christ, to die for our sins, to pay the price. And we have opportunities to receive him, as our Lord and Savior, to receive forgiveness into our lives and to start a journey of a lifetime, a journey of 18 lifetimes, a journey of eternity as we fellowship with you and live with you. I thank you, Lord God, for those under the sound of my voice, those that are viewing on this day. You know the needs of their lives. I speak and release our faith in healing where there is sickness, where there are those who are wrestling with COVID this morning, we release the word of healing by the stripes that Jesus bore on his back. There is healing in the name of Jesus, oh God. Those that are wrestling with other sicknesses and ailments, oh God, healing is your children's bread. And I thank you that you are the Lord, our healer. Father, we pray this morning, oh God, 
uh, for various needs that are represented, oh God. We pray for families today. Our ministry is a ministry of lifting up your, your plan for families, oh God. We pray for mothers and fathers, for husbands and for wives, and for sons and for daughters today, oh God, even for extended families. We pray that you would meet the needs of the hour and give families wisdom that they may be good stewards over what you have placed in their hands, O oh God. And even as we recognize some of the things that come against families, Father, we stand and we go against the gates of hell now, taking back all that he has stolen from our families, taking back all that he has stolen from our neighborhoods, from our communities, from our parish, from our state, from our nation, oh God. We're crying out for a great revival. And we recognize that now is the time for the church, for the body of Christ to arise. And so Father, we only arise after we spend time on our knees, time in prayer, giving you permission to interfere and to have your way. Father, may these moments prove pivotal in lives. May it prove pivotal even as our communities move together, trusting you and acknowledging you in all of our ways. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. Thanks be to God, amen, amen, amen. So glad that you have tuned in uh, today as uh, we join in on uh, this Sunday morning. And uh, we want to get into the word of the Lord this morning, uh, even as we have expressed our gratitude for you're tuning in today, and uh, we believe that it's an important aspect. Uh, even as we look forward to the first Sunday of July, there. Are... Okay, we're good. Technology. There are some things that uh, we're going to carry ahead with us, uh, even as we join in together and going forth uh, in this kingdom triumph. We're not looking back to going back to March of 2020 but we're going to be relevant for the summer of 2021. I draw your attention this morning to the book of Luke, the gospel of Luke chapter 10. I want to read a familiar, a familiar uh, parable uh, that Jesus does some teaching, the parable of the Good Samaritan. And uh, as well as some of you may know this particular parable, there are others that are being introduced to that. And uh, that's a wonderful thing. Uh, to know that there are those who are new to the scriptures, those who are new to the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hear the word of the Lord. I want to begin reading with verse number 25. On one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What is written in the law, Jesus replied. How do you read it? He answered, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. You have you've answered correctly, Jesus replied. So as we recognize the word of the Lord, we continue uh, on. Uh, Do this and you will live. Verse 29 of Luke chapter 10 and he wanted to justify himself, so he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? In reply, Jesus said, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he was attacked by robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road, and when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. So too, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came where the man was, and when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day, he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, Look after him, he said, and when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expense you may have. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? Verse 37, the expert in the law replied, the one who had mercy on him. 
Jesus told him, go and do likewise. Go and do likewise. As we join in together uh, with this word and understanding our calling to go and to do likewise. Friends, I uh, continue to hold on to the principle that I truly believe in. This principle is that we do our best spiritual work in our homes, with our families, on our jobs, in the schools that we attend, with the enemies that we engage with. I believe we do our best spiritual work in this place called life. Many times um, the body of Christ maybe has put just maybe a little bit too much emphasis on what happens in a church structure, what happens in the organizational structure of the church. And here in this ministry, we continue to lift up the importance of living for Jesus in life, living for Jesus as we live and as we do life. And so many times we're not experiencing great success in doing life uh, because uh, we struggle in living things out. We struggle in uh, doing that best spiritual work. Obviously, this is a burden of mine. I've done uh, a, a great deal of teaching on uh, living every day, a great deal of teaching of taking on the aspects of Jesus Christ, of wanting to model Jesus and not just checking off the religious check marks, the religious boxes that, okay, I've done this and this and this, so I, I'm doing my religious duty. But for you and I to understand that our calling is to go and to live like Jesus Christ as we work out our salvation. And so we want to be able to be strengthened in life. It's a growing process. None of us has attained that particular level that there is that great deal of authority and consistency and power in our lives as we live and so we understand that that becomes a, a growing aspect. That becomes a pushing aspect of, of who we are. And we want to see greater success in lives, lives that don't have time to uh, exercise the disciplines that are needed, uh, lives who are satisfied just with religious boxes checked off. We will ever push that. And so this is why I look at this time of the pandemic when we have been not able to assemble ourselves on a regular basis as a time where we can really do some grunt work. I don't know where it will play out after we finish this month of June in your life as far as where you are today in doing spiritual work compared to where you were in March of 2020. I don't know where, but I want you to know that this is what's been pushed. This is what's been an anchor. This is what's been our calling to improve and to be strengthened in our everyday living, to do this great spiritual work, even in those homes that you live in, homes that are filled with confusion, homes that are filled with division and so much divisiveness. Are we as a body of Christ adding to the divisiveness? Are we being a bomb? Are we being a healer? Wherever we may be, wherever we may be frustrated on our jobs with our coworkers, what opportunities have we taken uh, to measure up to what the Lord has called us to be about? And so, for me, um, we can't get off the hook. There are many who won't uh, answer the call maybe to do, quote, church work, that volunteer ministry work because they don't have time. They don't want to deal with that person. They don't want to deal with that group of people. They don't have time to, be, to, to fool with those things. Those things maybe are insignificant to you, or maybe you just don't feel qualified to engage in church ministry, in new life ministry. And so whatever it may be uh, in your life, whatever the reason that uh, you don't maybe serve in some official capacities in the life and the times of a church, remember you still don't get off of the hook. 
So for the leadership of this church, the most important spiritual work that you do is not on Sunday mornings in a church building, but the most important work you do is every day in the building called life. And wherever you live, wherever you go, wherever you engage yourselves in, ah, don't shout me down this morning. We are just setting that measuring tool, that measuring rod in regards to our lives. As many of you are excited about going back in a church, but yet you're frustrated with people around you. You're frustrated with the direction in which the church, this church has carried out the vision and carried out the ministry. Ah, I'm praying for you, my brother. I'm praying for you, my sister. For there is a great spiritual growth, a spiritual work that needs to be done in your life, that needs to be done in many lives, that, that continually needs to be done in my life. I'm not going to let you off of the hook because you just do what you do when you want to do it, how you want to do it. I'm seeing that the word of God is speaking unto you to grow. The word of God is speaking unto you to, uh, to, to lift up the name of the Lord in every way possible. And so that's one of the awesome lessons that Jesus tried to get across to the religious crowd of his day. Uh, he said that you may know all the church answers. You may participate in all the church things. Uh, you may know all the songs and the motions of worship. You may serve on a lot of church lists. You may serve on a lot of volunteer lists for church. But if you can't apply it to everyday living, then there is a falling short. There is uh, more to be grasped, if you will. And so as we recognize that, I really believe that people really want to do right. Even as I look out at the world around me, I believe that people want to do right. But yet I believe that people people's wills haven't been surrendered and giving over to the Lord. And so they struggle with so much. They want to do right, um, but they struggle with their will. And so here at New Life, we don't offer you seven steps to do right. If you do these seven things that you're going to do right and you're going to be right. But what we do offer you is a growing, vibrant relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, a growing relationship in love with Jesus Christ. This relationship serves as an anchor for us. It serves as a guide unto us. And so we Jesus, and he's trying to trap Jesus. That's kind of the, the motive. That's kind of the, the, the backdrop behind our text of scripture. And he comes to Jesus as, and inquired what he had to do to have eternal life. And Jesus' reply to him was to ask him a two-part question. Question one, what does the word say? And question two, how do you interpret it? What does the word say? And how do you interpret it? You know, there are a whole lot of interpretations out there in regards to the word of God. A lot of people are interpreting God's word in so many different ways. Even as we live in the 21st century culture that attempts to justify all of its, all of its behavior, all of its unrighteousness and they will
tell you this is what the word of God is really saying. They will give their interpretations unto that, and they are promoting a new world order. They're promoting a new way to live. And so we recognize that there are a lot of interpretations, and a lot of the interpretations have little to do with what the word of God says. Two questions Jesus says, what does the word say, and how do you interpret it? See, there are, there are some that feel that others are doing too much with the word of God. And then there are others on the other side of it saying that people are not doing enough with the word of God. Well, the church expert in our text of scripture this morning answers Jesus by quoting Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 5, which he says there in verse 27 as he speaks unto the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 27 of our text, he answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind, and love your neighbor as you love yourself. And Jesus says, ding, 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 ding. Good answer. Good answer is what Jesus is saying. Do this and you will live, Jesus says. Love the, love, love the Lord your God with everything that you have and love your neighbor as you love yourself. Jesus says, if you do this, you will live. And then verse, verse 29, this religious leader wanted to justify himself. So he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Who is my neighbor wanted to justify himself. And so one translation says, rather than justify, wanted to find a loophole, wanted to find a loophole. Doesn't that sound like so many people when they look at the word of God looking for a loophole? It doesn't say all of that. You don't have to do all of that. It doesn't take all of that looking for a loophole. You know, it's interesting to note that in the Gospel of Mark's account of this conversation, the expert makes a fantastic statement. If you look at the Gospel of Mark, chapter 12, verse 33, looking at this same reply that he makes. Verse 33, this is the, that religious expert, the church expert. What does the Lord say? To love him with all your heart and with all your understanding and with all your strength. And to love your neighbor as yourself is more important than all burnt offerings and all sacrifices. Wow. To love God and to love your neighbor is more important, is greater than worship on a Sunday morning, than church programs on a Sunday morning. To love the Lord your God and to love your neighbor as yourself is more important than church programs. Does this mean that we do away with our worship programs, with our singing and praying and preaching and giving? Of course not. It does not mean that. But it does mean that there is a greater priority. There is a greater priority. We don't do away with that. But the greater priority is to love God and to love your neighbor. And someone would say, well, when I worship God, I'm, I'm showing him that I love him. I'm showing him that I love God in a wonderful way in my worship. I'm doing that. But if you leave your worship and you go and to be a mean, bitter, cantankerous, confusion-based person, and you're grouchy and you're always complaining, you always have something negative to say, Jesus says, if you love you, uh, love me, you got to do my commandments. And just because you know how to lift your hands, just because you know how to wave your hands in worship, when you leave worship and you are angry and bitter and cantankerous, there's a greater priority that's here. And so this is what the lesson tells us today. Jesus says, if you love me, do my commandments. And so as we recognize that, we recognize that even as our text of scripture in the Gospel of Luke, as we go back to that, Jesus tells a parable then to illustrate to the church expert, who is my neighbor? And the parable that we have read already, the parable of the Good Samaritan, verses 30 through 35, as uh, we see that there was 
um, there was one that was walking alongside the road and the robbers beat him and, ro and, and took everything that he had. And uh, there was a priest who saw him and passed on the other way. There was a Levite who was a religious leader, did the same thing. But yet there was a good Samaritan. Samaritan was someone who was not in the clique, in the good religious clique, if you will. They were not legitimate people of God. And so it was somebody who was not a legitimate follower of God that actually became the neighbor. That's the parable. And so when we look at this parable, we ask the question, who does the priest and the Levite represent? And we could say that they represent people who everyone would associate with God, their church people. And what do the church people do? Well, they pass on the other side. Um, they don't have time. I'm sure that they justified themselves for a reason. They were late for church. They had technical difficulties on the camera, trying to get things together. And so therefore, I don't have time to be involved with this particular person. Um, I, I, I'm sure that there were many things that they used to justify uh, why they were in act, they didn't show any action uh, in this particular sense. You and I can think about those times that we were just too busy, didn't have time. We had another engagement. There was someone that was in need, someone who was our neighbor, and we didn't have time. You know, I would, rat I would imagine that they did not equate their relationship with God with helping someone in need. That click, that coming together, it didn't resonate in their spirits, I'm sure. And so, again, this is where I chime in with the point that we can't separate our spiritual lives from our everyday lives. We, we, just, we just can't. You can't separate your life in front of pastor from your life with your buddies and your conversations. You, you, you can't separate that. It, it, it doesn't work like that. And we're mindful of that. Even as we've had time to go house to house and to seek to get our houses in order, seeking to get our vessels in order in this time. And uh, we see that there's been a rhema word to come to us time and again about our lives. There is no separation from your life in a sanctuary on Sunday morning than from your life at the club on Saturday night. There's no separation. We can't separate your life on Sundays in a sanctuary from your life on social media when you're dogging and downing everybody you can think of. There's no separation. Our everyday life becomes our spiritual lives. And so it's not just in front of people that matters. Again, this ministry, you know, you've heard me say it time and again. It doesn't impress me when somebody can come inside of a church building and function and do all of these things in church. That's not what impresses Pastor Dale. What impresses Pastor Dale when I can see you loving the unlovable, when I can see you out in the community doing good deeds, doing good things, caring for those who no one else cares about. Again, this is not the first time you've heard me say it. And New Life Proper folks, you're probably getting tired of that. But that's, that's the ethic of our ministry, of what we do together. That becomes the bottom line, our everyday life with Jesus Christ. My time is about up, but let me share that how you treat people matters above whatever agenda or calling you may have. How we treat people, it matters. How we treat people may be their only opportunity to see Jesus. I have to remind myself of that continually, that people cannot be an inconvenience, but it's an opportunity for the word incarnate to be seen by them. And so we can't neglect uh, our failures. We can't neglect these opportunities. We can't be content with our failures to demonstrate the love of Jesus. And you know, as we close, I believe that 
the opportunities to demonstrate the love of Jesus provide us with those spiritual awakening moments that we need, those spiritual breakthrough times, those times of revival, all because we took the opportunity to share the love of Jesus Christ with someone else, our neighbor, those that are in need, I believe gives us the pathway for our own spiritual breakthroughs. You know, we can torment ourselves with our own lack of faithfulness, with our own bondages, with our own habits. But maybe, just maybe, if you're looking for that spiritual breakthrough, you need to find someone who needs mercy, not judgment, not blaming, not a tongue lashing, but needs mercy. Oh, you may say, oh, they don't deserve it. I've given them mercy over and over and over again. I just need to get to show them that they're going to respect me. You want deliverance? Go and do likewise, scripture says. You want deliverance from always being at the bottom and everybody always walking over you? Go and show mercy. Ah, but that's not what they deserve, pastor. They deserve to be put in check. They deserve to be put in their places for what they have done. Yeah, I know, just like me and you deserve to be put in check for our lives. If we want mercy, go in to give. I know this makes no sense. I know it makes no sense to you. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to live by this world system because you see the mess, division, hatred, malice that this world system has gotten us into. We need a new day. We need a new hope. We need a new anchor. If there's going to be anything to change, we have to stand up and say there is a new day. There's a new system that's in place. It's the love of the Lord. It's loving our neighbors as we love ourselves. It's loving God with everything that we have. Oh, Louisiana, pass a law on that. But you know what? I don't even want you to pass a law on that. Because this is something that has to be authentic, something that has to arise from our hearts. Boy, do I ever desire to see a change in the land that you and I live in, in the area that you and I live in. It becomes discouraging. It becomes stressful. It becomes heavy laden to see how people choose to live. But yet, we show our love for God as we show our love for neighbors by going and do likewise. Uh, this battle is not for the weak. This battle is not for the timid. This battle is not for those who are uncertain, but those who are so convinced, who know that they know that they know that the word of God is true, that the word of God is real. So therefore, as we work out our salvation, as we live out who we are in Christ Jesus day in and day out, love your neighbor as yourself. Show mercy to someone that is not, does not deserving of mercy. Uh, it's confusion, confusing, I know, to you. Take it to the Lord in prayer. There's meat in this word, and my challenge to you is that you would take the meat that you would chew up. There's a new day. There's a new system. There is a new piece that we're playing. And may you hear the voice of the Lord as he shares his word with us. As we know, he cares for us. As we've announced a new day, we've announced that new day of hope, but it's not based on any principle of this world system. It's not based on that not based on how people treat each other now. It's based on a whole different way. May the Lord help us. Even as we look forward into that day that we can assemble inside. May the world know that we've done the outside work necessary 
to know what becomes more important is how we live daily, how we become more and more like Christ, what we tolerate in our lives. I invite you to join me in a prayer, giving it to God. A prayer of, Lord, I want to be able to work out my spiritual life in everyday life situations. God, knowing that the circumstances and situations that you have placed me in, you know everything about them. And they're designed spiritually to strengthen us. And that calls us to fall away or fall to the wayside or to take up our own fleshly ways to deal with them. How are we going to deal with life that's been given unto us? Let's pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that we can approach your throne today. And I thank you, Lord God, for this new life family, this new life community, oh God. And our desire is to work out our spiritual life in the midst of real life, that these priorities of life becomes that we want to model Jesus Christ. Break everything in us that needs to be broken, O oh Lord. That we can model Christ all the more, O oh God. Help us as only you can, O oh Lord. Thank you for the fresh surrendering that's manifesting itself and been given over unto you. Thank you for the fresh, fresh vision that's being seen, O oh God. And we thank you, Lord God, that this vision is lived out in a fantastic way that honors you, Lord God. And we thank you for that honor as we take your relationship, our relationship with you seriously. Bless us, O oh God, for that one that doesn't know you, O oh God. We pray that today may be a day where they surrender their lives unto you, saying, Father, forgive me. Come into my life. Be Lord of my life. Be the head of my life. Be the leader of my life. And as they pray that prayer in faith, we believe that this new life has become a part of them. Hear our prayer today, Lord God, as we move ahead, being your people. Help us at every point of need we have. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. All right. All right. Thanks be to God. Again, so grateful that you tuned in. Just, uh, seeing all the great amens and to what um, has taken place today. And uh, we're grateful for all of those who've tuned in, even through our technical difficulties and glitches and glances and whatever else. We pray that whatever was seen and heard, that you felt the anointing of God ministering unto you uh, on the day. And so again, we're grateful for your tuning in today. We believe that it's important uh, even throughout these last 14 going on 15 months as we have um, still been the church, still been the body of Christ and uh, how important that has been uh, unto the kingdom of God, the kingdom's work. And I'm sure there have been high points and low points, even in your spiritual development. Don't panic. Just continue to hang in there. The tools that are being given unto you, take note of them. Continue to exercise them as you will. We'll come back Wednesday night with a continual lesson on our spiritual growth and spiritual foundation that is ever needed. I'm, I'm so grateful for those of you who uh, participate in our Wednesday night um, Zoom sessions and those times that it is uh, live streamed on Facebook. Um, again, all in an effort to help you with everyday life everyday life. Even as we look forward to uh, July 4th, our time, Lord willing, uh, gathering together inside uh, a sanctuary as we will gather there at the Ministry and Retreat Center uh, at the campground on uh, that Sunday. Uh, in the meantime, though, um, next Sunday, the next two Sundays, we'll have our outdoor and drive-in services at the Ministry and Retreat Center at the campground, 445 Campground Road. We extend the welcome to you uh, to remain in your cars or come into the shaded areas at this particular point 
of our outdoor uh, services as we would welcome you uh, to be a part of that. So both next Sunday, the second Sunday of June and the third Sunday, which is Father's Day, we'll have our outdoor services and our uh, driving service at the same time. So the next two Sundays, uh, weather permitting, Lord willing, uh, we'll be outside there at the Ministry and Retreat Center. Uh, our fourth Sunday in the month of June, we'll be back on, uh, on live stream before heading back into the sanctuary. Those of you who volunteered to serve in those ministries, those helps ministries, uh, next Sunday, next Saturday, I'm sorry, uh, June the 12th at 4 p.m. There will be training as a uh, special training as we ready ourselves to go inside. Thanks to all of those. And so again, that, uh, that training comes forth uh, at that particular time. Um, again, those of you who have completed your new life survey, kind of our reopening survey, uh, re-going inside survey, we're grateful for that. And uh, we just encourage you, if you have not completed that survey, to go to that link in your text message. Just click on that link and it'll open up that survey for you. Locally, we continue to pray for our families, our kids who are out of school. We do have some kids some of our uh, elementary kids who are attending Camp Accelerate, we encourage that and uh, grateful that some of our kids are doing that uh, to help uh, reinforce what is taking place this last year in the classrooms. Uh, whether you were in the classrooms, whether you're online, whether you're a part of SAVE, uh, whatever it may be, we encourage uh, the attendance uh, of that. Let's continue to intercede and uh, pray for our area and our nation. Uh, as we move forward, uh, just believing that God is in control of our lives and uh, we're believing him that he's going to um, he's going to come through in our lives in a way that will honor him. So be encouraged, be strengthened as you go forward. All right, we're going to ready ourselves to uh, tune out from here. I've been tuned out four or five times, whether or not you've known it. Uh, from this live stream, but thanks be to God, we've made it through until the ending, but we're praying that you have been blessed, that you've been benefited as a result of being a part of this live stream. If you need to go back and to watch it, we would encourage that, but we're so grateful that you've tuned in again. So this coming Wednesday, we'll have our uh, midweek Zoom uh, and, and our Facebook Live uh, lesson for those first 30 minutes, 6.30 Central Time and uh, we'll come back next Sunday. We'll be uh, there at the ministry and retreat center at the campground with our outdoor and drive-in services. So until next time, may the Lord bless you, be encouraged, be strengthened, and uh, you pray for me and I'll pray for you, and we're gonna watch God change things. Until next time, may the Lord bless you. Thank you for making a difference. Living for Jesus. It means all the world. So we're grateful. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you.